remark by China's ambassador to France has sparked controversy right around the world. During a French TV interview, Ambassador Lu She seemingly questioned the sovereignty of former Soviet republics. Now those nations and the EU want answers from Beijing. Lu She said this, these ex-Soviet countries don't have an effective status in international law because there was no international agreement to materialize their status as sovereign countries. Luce's comments are now one of the topics at today's meeting of EU foreign ministers, and it could jeopardize China's efforts to be a mediator between Ukraine and Russia. Our Ivan Watson explains it all for you. Comments by China's ambassador to Paris on French television claims that former Soviet republics uh, don't have any real status according to international law. They triggered somewhat of a diplomatic firestorm in Europe, with uh, the governments of three former Soviet republics, uh, Lithuania, Latvia, and Estonia, all saying that they would be summoning Chinese diplomats to try to clarify these claims. And meanwhile, uh, a statement has come out on the Chinese embassy in France's website today showing a, a pretty sharp 180-degree U-turn with the statement, quote, the ambassador Lu She's remarks on the question of Ukraine were not a statement of policy, but an expression of his personal opinion. They should not be the subject of over-interpretation, going on to say that China uh, respects the sovereignty, independence, and territorial integrity of all countries, and that China would like to help mediate uh, a peaceful settlement to Russia's ongoing invasion and occupation of Ukraine. But it appears the damage has already been done. The foreign ministry of Lithuania says uh, his government simply does not trust China to negotiate when it comes to this conflict. Take a listen. This is the narrative that we've been hearing from Moscow. And now it's being sent out by another, by another country, which is, in our eyes, an ally of Moscow in, in many cases, if not military, then politically at least, uh, and sending the same messages, questioning of, uh, you know, of the whole concept of, of independence or sovereignty, which is very dangerous in uh, these days. There have also been statements by the European Union foreign policy chief calling the Chinese ambassador's remarks unacceptable. Also from uh, another former Soviet Republic, Moldova, its foreign ministry, saying it was surprised and it wanted clarification from Beijing. Part of this gets to the suspicion in parts of Eastern Europe about China, which professes to be neutral in the Russia-Ukraine war, uh, even as the Chinese leader Xi Jinping continues to conduct face-to-face -face meetings with the Russian president Vladimir Putin, while he has yet to have any direct communication with the Ukrainian president Volodymyr Zelensky. Ivan Watson, CNN, Hong Kong. Now a more dangerous place than during the Cold War. That is the worldview of Russia's foreign minister, who's been chairing a meeting at the UN Security Council over the past couple of hours, in fact. Russia currently holds the rotating monthly presidency of the Security Council. As the session got underway, the UN Secretary General slammed Russia's invasion of Ukraine, as well as the devastation it has caused. In turn, Sergei Lavrov, the man you're looking on your screen, said the world is currently in a more precarious situation than in decades. This is what he said. As was the case in the Cold War, we have reached a dangerous, possibly even more dangerous threshold. The situation is worsened with the loss of trust and multilateralism when the financial economic aggression of the West is destroying the benefits of globalization, when the United States and its allies are abandoning diplomacy and demanding uh, clarification of relations on the battlefield. And this is all done in the halls of the United Nations, which was created to prevent the horrors of war. Let's get more on this. Richard Roth has the very latest on the meeting from the UN. Richard, good to see you. I mean, what we heard there, just a little clip from Sergei Lavrov, was uh, a pretty uh, list, long list of grievances. But any acceptance uh, to the role it's playing in Ukraine? Acceptance by the other members of the Security Council? Not really. I mean, uh, Sergei Lavrov, the Russian foreign minister, he was here for years as Russia's UN ambassador. He knows the terrain. He knew the storm he was walking into. The U.S. ambassador to the UN, Linda Thomas-Greenfield, before the meeting said, Russia is the giant elephant in the room. It's still amazing that there's a conflict with one permanent member of the Security Council invading another country, and they are now chairing the Security Council for the month of April. Uh, Lavrov will be present tomorrow for another meeting on the Middle East, and he'll be in the chair's seat, and he may hold a press conference tomorrow. 
Uh, the U.S. ambassador announced once again Russia's actions uh, illegal, trying to invade and take over another member country. Uh, as a different note, Elizabeth Whalen, the sister of imprisoned U.S. citizen Paul Whalen, spoke to the press outside the Security Council, and she defiantly said that the U.S. must help get Whalen out of Russia and Moscow must acquiesce. Russia's less than sophisticated take on diplomacy is to arbitrarily detain American citizens in order to extract concessions from the United States. This is not the work of a mature and responsible nation. It is the action of a terrorist state. And I am here to tell Russia, free Paul Whelan. The U.S. ambassador said that uh, Whelan and the Wall Street Journal reporter Gershkovich are political pawns in this matter. The U.S. has spoken already at this meeting. Russia has spoken, though it's very possible Russia will want to respond to all the criticism from major Western countries and some African countries at the meeting. Isha? Thank you very much, Richard Roth, for us there in New York. Appreciate it, Richard.